I'm going to read through An Unknown Girl by Manisa Alvi. Um, this may be in prepar preparation for your Edexcel IGCSE English Language Exam, um, which would be paper two. Your teacher may have chosen for you to take the coursework option, so it could be for your coursework, or it could be a poem that you're covering for a different exam board. Um, just a little bit of background about Manisa before we continue. Um, first of all, you do not need to mention context in your answer. There, is, there are no uh, marks awarded for context for edXL IGCSE. Um, however, I think it will help you understand this poem more so. Manisa was born in Pakistan, moved to England, um, and always spoke openly about how she really struggled with her sense of identity. She didn't quite know where she belonged and, and kind of what culture, Eastern or Western, that she associated herself with. Um, now, the speaker in, is a little different. She's from, it, I think, she has connections with India. We never really know. It's a little ambiguous. But it suggests that she has connections with India, but also with the Western world. Um, so although it's not Pakistan, I think she shares the experience of uh, Maniza Alvi in the sense that... Um, they struggle between these two very different cultures. Okay, so looking at the title, I'm just going to focus mostly on the word unknown. This reinforces this uh, idea of lacking identity. You will notice that an unknown girl is repeated throughout the poem. Um, so you can refer to this as a refrain, um, suggesting that this line is of um, high importance. Initially, at the beginning of the poem, it seems like an unknown girl is in reference to the girl that is hennering her hand. But by the end of the poem, you may come to the conclusion that an unknown girl is actually the speaker. She doesn't quite know who she is. Um, and again, of course, that's, that's linked to her identity. You could also analyse girl, which connotes inexperience as well. Um... Okay, let's move on. In the evening bazaar, studded with neon, an unknown girl is hennering my hand. So note the diction choice here and the contrast between them. We've got a bazaar, which is a traditional market setting in India, um, but it's studded with neon lights, um, which is really evidence of kind of the westernization of India. Um, now that contrast might um, reflect how the girl feels, that she feels like she doesn't, she stands out in this environment, she doesn't quite belong. Um, but it could also link to neon lights being quite harsh and superficial. And does that maybe reveal how she feels about herself, that her identity is superficial, whether that be her identity, her kind of connection with Indian culture or her connection with Western culture. It doesn't quite feel real to her. Um, so there's something for you to explore. She squeezes a wet brown line from a nozzle. Notice the use of sibilants here to create a soothing tone. So this whole process of her hand being hennaed is soothing and comforting to her. And we later learn that it helps create a connection with Indian culture and gives her great comfort. She is icing my hand, which she steadies with hers on her satin peach knee. Um, so the word icing here rem reminds me of icing a cake, which, at least in my opinion, because I have tried to ice, I'm not very good at it. Um, I think here she's trying to emphasize the intricacy and the skill of hennering. So she's showing kind of her appreciation um, for, for the girl's skill. But also maybe go further and think about how when you ice a cake, you're decorating it, you want it to look better. Does she feel like the henna is improving her in some way? And and maybe not just physically, because of henna, I'm sure many of you will have seen henna, it's beautiful. Um, but maybe more so, she's being improved internally as well. She feels better about herself. And then the satin peach of what the girl is wearing identifies her as Eastern as well. So again, it just continues, it continues that kind of contrast between East and West throughout this poem. In the evening bazaar, for a few rupees, an unknown girl is hennering my hand. A few rupees reflects the poverty of India, but I again, I think I'd go beyond here 
and talk about the irony that it only cost a few rupees yet actually this um this process of getting our hand um hennaed is um extremely valuable to her it brings this wonderful experience that by the end she wants to cling on to um so that's why hence why she uses the refrain in the evening bazaar an unknown girl is hennering my hand that's why it's significant to her as a little air catches my shadow stitched chemise a peacock spreads its lines across my palm so as the the air seems to change slightly i would argue this is the use of pathetic fallacy which creates potentially a sense of unease maybe emotional unease because she's sensing that she's starting to feel different about herself um this could be symbolized as well i haven't written it in the annotations but this could be symbolized by the personification of the henna it's now a peacock spreading its lines across my palm rather than you know it's the girl drawing uh, the henna on my hand um so it seems like the henna is taking a life of it of its own and kind of taking over her and making her feel more connected um notice the um the diction choice shadow potentially indicating there's something dark within her now could that be linked to her sadness or could it be the fact that she kind of sees herself as a mystery that she doesn't quite understand herself um also sorry i should have mentioned peacock is the national bird of india so it's significant that she chooses to have the peacock hennaed on her hand rather than any other um design so it suggests that she really is trying to connect with indian culture as well to choose to have the peacock over anything else colors leave the streets float up in balloons so here we've got this like beautiful imagery of it getting darker dummies in shop fronts tilt and stare with their western perms it's interesting diction choice here because she could have referred to them as mannequins but she chooses to use the word dummies which has much more negative connotations um so is she kind of thinking about kind of the artificial or fake western influence and its contrast to the kind of traditional henna or the traditional setting um or is she very much aware of the clash and how they stand out in comparison to everything else and is that how she feels about herself is this her being self-conscious um does she stand out does she feel like she doesn't belong like these dummies um do not belong and the fact that they tilt and stare so we've got personification there a sense of unease does she feel like she's um under scrutiny almost again this sense that she doesn't belong and she um clearly stands out and everyone's aware of it um banners of miss indian 1993 for curtain cloth and sofa cloth canopy me so it's interesting that she makes reference to miss india that's a very popular competition in india um and it's been repurposed as curtains and sofa cloth um the word canopy especially i think more so suggests that she feels comforted and protected by this i have read other um interpretations that suggest she might be overwhelmed um by that but and you're more than welcome to use that interpretation as well it's always best to show your appreciation of of multiple interpretations i have new brown veins i love the use of short sentence here there's clearly a change something quite um almost confident as well and self assured about that short sentence um it's a metaphor obviously her her veins aren't really brown but we're linking this to blood and blood being her heritage so she feels very much like she's becoming much more indian while she's having her hands hennaed in the evening bazaar very deftly an unknown girl is hennering my hand i'm clinging to these firm peacock lines like people who cling to the sides of train of a train sorry notice the repetition of cling um think about reasons why you cling on to something it's normally because you're desperate to hold on so she got this incredible desire to hold on to that sense of belonging that this process of getting her hands hennered has given her um and then notice the next line 
um, now the furious streets are hushed. You might argue that this kind of mirrors her experience and might explain why she's trying to cling on to this moment. Um, because right now her connection to India is strong, but it just like how the streets were furious. Um, but that might be temporary and actually she says later it will be that the lines will fade um so it's only a temporary it's only temporarily strong and that connection will fade and i think that an anticipation makes her feel desperate to hold on i'll scrape off the dry brown lines before i sleep now for some reason i've copied this incorrectly so i'll go straight to 41 so i'll, say, I'll scrape off the dry brown lines before i sleep Reveal soft as a snail trail, the amber bird beneath. Um, so here we've got the reference of the amber berm, connotations of a, a precious stone. So again, this bird, which is um, the national bird, uh, national animal of India, um, is precious to her. Um, it also has connotations. Amber has connotations of warmth. So it gives her again this great comfort as well um it will fade in a week again look at that short sentence it's a temporary feeling just like this line finishes very quickly when india appears and reappears i'll lean across a country with my hands outstretched longing for the unknown girl in the neon bazaar so again we have this image think about her kind of leaning out out um with her hands stretched out again this desperation to hold on to this memory or hold on to this experience this feeling of belonging so we're learning that the speaker rarely feels this great sense of connection with the culture and that this moment she has that and she wants to hold on to it because she's uh she, she's not used to it she's used to feeling quite um confused about her about her culture and where she belongs so looking at the poem as a whole, it's free verse. You might argue that this um, mirrors her lack of certainty about herself. Um, you'll notice that the lines are centred as well, rather than too typically to the left. Um, does it suggest that she's kind of stuck in the middle of two cultures? She's got like weak allegiance to either side. Um, that's one way of reading it. Um, the short lines as well could... Um, refer to that temporary feeling we were talking about that connection will will end um, so it's the shortness of the feeling um, but also the little punctuation which as well you could definitely talk about in Jarman here I forgot to put that on this is just a stream of consciousness something that's happening um, in the moment that she's having her henna but notice that even though this is a really nice experience it ends up almost with an anxious tone so she's quite comforted at the beginning and she's quite excited about the fact that she's starting to feel this connection at the end you might argue that the tone changes it's quite anxious because she knows this feeling won't last forever um that's quite sad that she won't have that sense of comfort uh, in terms of who she is